Hi, I'm Kareem Trujillo. I'm an attending surgeon at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. I specialize in the surgical therapy of prostate cancer. And today we'll be talking about uh, the paradigm shift um, in the management of prostate cancer and the role of surgery in, that, in this paradigm shift. And so, as we know, we have developed over the years a number of uh, risk assessment tools that allow us to separate patients either in the low risk, intermediate, and high risk category. And, um, and the treatments for a number of years has uh, not followed the risk stratification. Patients were diagnosed with prostate cancer and received therapy. Initially, the surgical therapy has for a number of years concentrated on the low risk and uh, intermediate risk disease and has not, um, in, in a number of centers, has not um, focused on the treatment of high risk cancer. Over the years, with the efforts from prostate cancer screening trials and uh, the implementation of active surveillance programs and now with mature data, we are certainly aware that in the low risk category, many men with low risk prostate cancer um, are better off with an active surveillance program which avoid any of the side effects of the treatments as long as their cancer remains in a status quo and changed. And I think what we've seen in many centers is that the proportion of men that are enrolled in active surveillance protocols has been um, dramatically increasing from year to year and today it's uh, becoming a, a a major part of the management of men of low risk disease. I'm happy to see that because it means that men with low risk prostate cancer um, are not um, being over treated for a disease that certainly could remain indolent or quiescent, particularly in those um, of a limited life expectancy, expectancy, older age, or those that have uh, significant comorbidities. The treatment as it stands, it gives uh, outstanding results, whether it's surgery or radiation therapy in the intermediate risk disease. However, our focus should be on the high risk disease. And in the high risk disease, which is in prostate cancer, the one that most likely along with the intermediate risk disease to unfortunately lead to death from prostate cancer. And so for the high risk disease, um, as a result of clinical trials, radiation and hormonal therapy has been a major recommendation in that group. Surgery has been gravely underutilized and I think that has been recognized in experiences of centers such as Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center where there have been, and others that have been committed to the surgical therapy even in face of high risk disease has provided us with um, good results. However, Good results are for the overall, but when we look at it, a high-risk prostate cancer is still a heterogeneous group of patients, and in that high-risk category, there are a lot of men who, uh, despite the best therapies we have, single modality therapies, still are not doing well. And uh, in, since 2010, uh, there are potent systemic therapies that have been um, discovered and have shown that they prolong survival, it is in, unavoidable to think the following question. What if we approach high-risk prostate cancer in a multidisciplinary fashion and use the best of our armamentarium in surgery, in radiation therapy, and in systemic therapy to try to find the best approach to avoid death from prostate cancer or to allow men to live with their cancer without dying from their cancer and have a good preservation of quality of life. I think today we're very close to this objective and there are trials. One conducted for example with, through the CLGB which combined chemotherapy and hormonal therapy in new adjuvant in a randomized fashion versus surgery. Um, and, and certainly we will await the results of that trial when the data matures and the follow-up is, is completed. Other trials are also looking at different combination of therapies and that's an exciting time to finally address the question in men who really need treatment from prostate cancer, yet that treatment is yet to be defined, but I think the trials are going to in the upcoming years to give us that result, but certainly the effort is, is going in that regards. Now, um, 
the high risk prostate cancer um, as you know is defined by existing parameters such as PSA, Gleason grade and, uh, and the stage of the disease uh, basically uh, depending on the, the definition we use either PSA greater than 20, clinical T2C or clinical T3A and, uh, and, the, uh, uh, and the Gleason 8, 9 and 10. Now from long-term data from the multi-institutional uh, uh, analysis uh, we have learned that men with Gleason 8, 9 or 10 are more likely to die from their cancer. Men with seminal vesicle invasion or lymph node invasion are also at high risk of dying from prostate cancer. And that could pretty much summarize our definition and help us um, focus on truly this very high risk group of patients for whom therapy is, imp is important, therapy could save lives, um, and, uh, and, and, and continue our commitment to clinical trial enrollment for these patients so we can obtain the answers we need and we move forward.